This is my third year on a power meter. I love using my power meter for training and racing. I can collect a lot of valuable data. I've had data from the age best on the age for the last three years now. This year I was second in the race and I was able to analyze my data and look at the differences and where I made the differences in my training and in my racing and preparing for a race like that. Um, through that race I was able to see that over, in the first two and a half hours of the race I was able to average 40 watts less than I had the previous two years, although my normalized power at the end of the race was actually higher because I made my made my, uh, made my attack at the end and was able to produce the power because I had been saving energy throughout the race. And so having data from this unit to be able to retroactively go back and look at what I did in the years past and also be able to see you know, live during the race what I'm doing what needs to be done is a real benefit to us as racers. Yeah, Tour of the Gila, the Gila Monster is a big day. It was uh, 107 miles, I believe, uh, 10,000 feet of climbing. Uh, it was a big day, and a day like that, you know, using having a power meter to be able to record the climbing, the distance, but also the kilojoules burned is a really critical unit of measurement. You know, on a day like that, you need to make sure you're drinking water, you're eating, you're staying fueled. But then at the end, also to make sure, you know, at a race like that, also the elevation is a factor in your power. So when your people are, you know, know their threshold is X, X number, but, you know, at altitude, maybe it's Y, so it changes the variable. So if people are trying to overdo their power, they might blow up. So using a power meter to subtract what the elevation changes is very crucial. I'm Dave Toll with Ian Boswell of the Bontrager Livestrong team, fresh off a great ride at the Tour of the Gila last week. And I guess after that ride, Mount Baldy is probably on your mind. I'd imagine that uh, this quark power meter is going to come into play. You know, a climb like that when it's long, you know, you got to got to keep yourself in the zones and make sure that you're not going to blow up and can't recover. So I have, uh, I know what my threshold is. I know what kind of watts I can produce and, uh, you know, I'll try to keep myself within those zones so I can, you know, do the ride I know I can do and ride with the guys at the front of the race. There's all kinds of cool things on your Trek bike here, but that power meter might be the most important important tool you have? Uh, it's the most important for training and racing. You know you know what you can do and you can ride within your limits and you know what the other guys can do and so you know th then it comes down to tactics and saving your energy for when it counts. We watched the race explode on Mount Baldy last year. What kind of a number do you see on your quark when you're going hard? Uh, the guys at the top were looking at you know 400 plus watts. Wow. Like that. How big of a difference would it be if you didn't have that on your bike? Uh, I mean you got to know yourself as well but having a having the data is really crucial to knowing exactly what you can do and comparing yourself to the other riders.